Welcome to Coach's Roundtable. I'm Ed Cody. To my right, the Swami George Abraham. To my left, the Tiger Albert Campman. Guys, let's go back and take a look at the year in uh, review. It's not possible to cover everything, but let's pick up where we left off at high school football. What has impressed you guys the most about this year? Well, what, the El Copo was the most impressive thing to me. That they, they, they with, with graduating 100 kids, um, I mean, seven, no, 40 kids, can go in and beat Bishop McDivitt in the state championship game. It, it, it's amazing to me. The other thing that st stands out to me is that the same names appear every year. It's it's, it's amazing the program cultures that have built and, uh, and continue to continue to show up. So I will give Mott Lebanon credit that this team was coming through five years ago. People talked about it. They went out and spent money to get the best coach to coach these kids, and it, and it paid off. Yeah, I you know Bob, Bob Polko to win championship at one school to go to another school and win. He knew win, he knew win he was another, going to. another did a tremendous uh, job. And then I think Penn Trafford. I don't think anyone uh, saw them going all the way. They they win their first WPL championship and their first state championship. I think their coach who came from Gateway did a terrific job. Well, that's their first two games. So yes, you, you know you, you lose your first two games, and then, you, and you then can lose win your, your team and win thirteen in a row. You can lose your team. He kept yeah, them together. Oh yeah, and the Whippeo, you know, winning. Three, four, five, and six. I mean, that's that's impressive. They only lost one game. They didn't have anybody in the single way. And I uh, even mentioned the Butler football. I know they played a mixed schedule, but their first regular season, a winning season, and make the playoffs since 1993. That's a long, long drought. Well, you have to you have to start somewhere. And we talked about yeah. the, what, what were they what were they going to do? Um, right, they didn't, you know, and they have to stay where they are. I know some people say, they're, "Are they going to go back in the WPL?" And I say, "No, you, you got to have three, at least three straight winning seasons, in my estimation, and your numbers have to be up significantly before you think about coming back." Well, they should. I mean, they should have winning seasons. I mean, they're, they're four hundred kids playing teams with 100 to 200 kids. Yeah, they're there's, no, there's no reason why they shouldn't win, but but they had to do it because they were they were over forever. I mean, they were not winning a game ever. Wow, well, 28, what is it, 28 years there. Yeah, that's, that's all you got to know, that's 28 years. I came. It was Bill Bourne. Right. 90, you know, how many years. The bottom line is, though, with this, the trouble with this District 10 is there's only... There's One only, six a Well, oh, there's two, Erie and McDowell. Oh, Erie, that's, right. that's right, Erie, Erie, yeah, which I mean, is a that, combination of those other yeah, schools, right? It would be right. nice if there were and, four and or yet, five. I don't consider yeah, Erie to be on yeah, the same level as a 6A. No. Uh, the big yeah, what George said was important there, though. Yeah. And I wouldn't be complaining. If they, had, if they were playing five big schools yeah, yeah. and four little schools, I could handle that. Yeah, yeah. they run a mixture. But, but they play two big schools and the rest of them they yeah. play are well, well, they, they, the they, they, they prep. They play five. They prep a five. They play yeah. two. Butler's still bigger than them. They played, I think. not as good. Two, played, two, yeah. two, two, five A, and then they played Franklin. I don't know what Franklin There's is. There's three A. Yeah. House is yeah. two A. Yeah. So it's a mixture. Yeah, the, the thing about it is, now Meadville next year, that'll be no joke. No, They're all back with two. You remember that. Uh, the big story, of course, uh, at Pine Richland where Eric Kasparovich was uh, forced out, fired, and a new coach uh, took over, Steve Campos. They went 7-5, and five, and that story may not end. They elected four new school board members, and it'll be <laughs> oh, no. interesting to see what will happen. Oh, they, that's they, so they, interesting. They've said ahead of time that they want to change things there, whether Eric Kasparovich will be one of those changes. He comes back. He's been at Pitt. Uh, remains to be seen. Wow, would that be, be crazy? That would be the crazy story of the year. That would be. He could he, he could be back. Expect, His son. No, I would expect it. That's why they ran. Yeah, that's why the board members. Um, they ran. Gotcha. They ran, and some of the issues with with administration and how things were were handled. They listen. In the last what six years, they've had four athletic directors. Wow! Wow! Big big big. Something's changes. wrong there, Dan. Something's yes. wrong. Yes. And high school baseball. How about Newcastle? They win their first ever state title. That was a big big story back in the spring. Two pitchers. I mean, you have two pitchers. One's that, going to Notre Dame, yeah, and he's Miller, only a the, sophomore. Yeah, the, the big Bolton L, ever say his and name. And Rocco's going Rock, to yeah, two big time pitchers. Kent State. Yeah, two big, two Division One pitchers 
we'll get you there in a hurry. <laughs> so sure, yes. And the Greb Sisters of uh, Knock winning the WPIL and PIAA 2A doubles championship in tennis. Um, te tennis is one of those sports, and I coach it, that if you start young and, you ha and you're a little bit athletic, you can be a dominant player because you, you learn techniques, learn the game, and, learn, and, and get personal trainers. I guarantee you this family's been working. You can't, put the, you can't do what they've done without putting a lot of work in. And uh, North Allegheny, I don't know, they won maybe oh, another geez. half dozen WPL and, and state championships. The NA girls basketball and volleyball teams were powerful. They're cross-country teams. They're swimming teams. There are so many of them. They just keep moving on and on. You just talked about the administration at Pine Ridge when we talked about Well, let's yeah. go reverse it in North Allegheny. I remember when I was coaching track, there was a personal uh, in the paper asking for a pole vault guy, pole vault coach, and asking for, I mean, more money than I was making as a head coach. And they they put their money yeah, in they, these other sports, not just football. Yeah. They put it, you know, baseball, yes. swimming, and it pays That's off. That's what Mount Lebanon did. It, yes. The, it, you're always <laughs> cutting corners and trying to do the cheap thing. It's like the Pirates. They went out and <laughs> got the best the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And Carn City uh, District uh, Football Championships, Soccer Championships, another great year in all their sports. I'm glad programs. you mentioned that, Matty. Yes. Because, you know, because – because I, in Elwood City, and I just read about the Daily Pay a lot. I miss the other districts. And Carn City is a, has treated us so well when we've been there. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they are communities <coughs> all in for academic and sports. And sometimes uh, they just don't understand. They, they go together. So Carn City makes their name a lot of times, not just academically. But you say, oh yeah, they're they're good. They're good in everything. They, they're this girls really good. soccer, boys yes. soccer. Uh, their basketball team, tre tremendous yes. season. And uh, Elwood City boys win the WPL three uh, A basketball championship, uh, the first in school history. Oh yes, for sure. I'll tremendous and, and chance for a repeat. Yeah, what a job they started off slow and won what eleven or twelve games in a row. Yeah, and on the way to the championship. They uh, they had excellent guard play coming back, and then they had talked about a young kid was coming through. Amazingly, they were right on it. Joseph, they the, Joseph Roth. The, the Roth brothers. Yeah, and Anthony's really good. Then you had the, the great swimmers, too. The swimmer. Yeah, I mean, so I had them on last yeah, year. Yeah, it's amazing. And, and the coach's son, Steve Antoine. Steve Antoine, Antoine yeah, his son plays. So, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a great a great uh, thing for the community. I imagine that, that, that gym's going to be sold out. Oh, no every question. Game. No question. Maybe at some point we can get over there and do one of their games. Yeah, it'd be fun to see that. Pro sports. How about the Penn sold to the Fenway Sports Group, the MU, to remain a minority Owner, uh, any concern the pens could be moved? What do you think? No, about I, think that, this? I think when that happened, I they're, think, they're not being moved. I think Mario, okay. that's, I think that's why it. he stayed on as he did. I, I, I was read somewhere, he, he just, after all these years as a player and working, he just got worn out. He just wants time away from it. He doesn't mind being minority owner, but he'd like to take his time, go to Florida, golf, whatever he likes to do. Well, our producer, Matt, is a gigantic fan. And, 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 and when I think of Pittsburgh, I think sold out. I don't think, I don't think of a place where – Man, fans aren't coming here like you know Tampa Bay. They they pack them in. Yes. So I don't think they're hurting for money. Uh, I, you know, I was I was concerned at first and worried at first, but now I feel more confident that they are going to stay. This Fenway Sports Group, man, or these guys are powerful. They they're own the up. Red Sox. Yeah, they're Cat, cashed up. Multi multi billionaires. Yeah. And the Pirates Groundhog Day last again. Over 140 losses the last two years. Remember, the 2020, they were 19 and 41. Don't forget, it was abbreviated. You can yeah. multiply that almost by two. Right, the worst record in baseball. Their attendance for 2021, 859,000, 10,600 average. The first time below a million since 1995. Do we have any confidence that things are going to get better anytime soon? Well, well as a, as a big-time fan. That I was when they got rid of Hurdle. Yeah, I, I say you used to. Be. I went down, and in those five years with Hurdle, I don't care what they say, it was the best five Hurdle years. Hurdle back with the Rockies. Yeah, it was nice. Yes, it was nice. He, I mean, he won. He he, he was over five hundred, and you know, you you just throw that around. A guy being over five hundred with the Pirates is in today's world. No, not Danny Murphy. Yeah, it's quite. Why did the chief? And yeah. you bring up Murtaugh, once, once again ignored. He should be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, 540 winning percentage. 540, two, two world championships. DeRocher's in, he won one. Uh, I, I think Tommy Lasorda won two, he's in. Uh, Gil Hodges got in, he won one. Right. Uh, just amazing to me that Murtaugh should, should be automatically be like the Super Bowl. Murtaugh should be in there. Yeah, yeah, Flores should not have gotten in 40 years late. The finishing concept on that, what you were going to say, though. Um, this is 
they are doing what, they, what a non-paying franchise does. They got about 11 really good players coming through two years from now. You know, I, I don't doubt it, but what know, are they going to do with them? I'm saying, only last, but, don't, but See, no, they're going to they're going to be good for anybody a year, two years, the, and then they'll lose them all. They're, they're a be, de facto farm system in the major yeah, leagues. So they're they're the they got, yes, it, it, once again, we talked about same with the Memphis Grizzlies in the NBA. Right. If no one else could get anybody else, like you had to play the hand you were dealt. Right. They'd be right there. Uh huh. Uh, GM Ben Cherryton, you guys give me your take on his quote. He, he, when he talked about the poor attendance, he said, if we win, they'll come back. I, I think it's true. I agree, Eddie. But that will they win? True. No. Yeah, That's I told question. you they are going to. Not, not, not gigantic. Not like not, not I'm, I'm talking about. I'm talking about winning 83 games a year. No, maybe, no, no. They'll, they'll be a year. They'll, the same thing the Pirates did when they brought those all young players. And came through with her, a hurdle. It's going to happen again, but it's only going to happen a year or two years, and then it's going to break up again. I, I, That's I, I remember part. going to a game at Three Rivers when, when things fell apart there, when uh, Del Bearer played. And, yes. And, uh, there were 3,000 at the game, and the ushers didn't care where you sat. <laughs> no, and I And we like moved that. along. Thir- we could hear the, th- uh, the, the third baseman talking, and yes. Yes. it, 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 it was common. terrible. No, no, it was there last year, 9,000 a game. 10,600 yeah. a game. Yeah. Hey, Major League Baseball lockout, why, and does anyone really care? Free agent issues, they want to reduce it. They want more money. The players uh, already have guaranteed contracts, but they're bemoaning the fact that older free agents aren't getting enough money, and yet over a billion dollars signed deals before the lockout they need to take a look at some issues they have. They're dwindling attendance, 28,000 average per game in 2019 when they drew 68 million fans to an average of this past year, 23,000, and drawing 45 million fans. That's a 14.9% drop. TV viewership has plummeted, a 12.9% decline from 2019. Major League Baseball players have everything they've ever wanted and yet, they are very unhappy. Yeah, they're unhappy, and the owners unhappy. Well, this and, is a lockout. This is a strike. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. So billionaires and millionaires, uh, we can't, we can't relate to that. You know, what so what is it that they don't have? Getting yeah. their toenails clipped free yeah. every month. Yeah, we have a what? hard time relating to it. I, what they're doing. And yet, as I told you, there was an economics professor who said major league baseball players are not overpaid. Many of them are underpaid. I, I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know his viewpoint. He calls it America's best game. I'm sorry, professor. It is not America's best game. It's pro football. Well, yeah, today it's turned it. Baseball's still my game. And so I understand that it's, yeah. it's my fa- favorite. I just truly believe it. Set it on the show forever, guys, fans. If you're watching, they need a floor. They need a, they need a, they need a floor in there to say to the owners, if you're going to own a team, you have to pay 150. You have to pay uh, uh, your team 150 million dollars. Now, if you want to pay 500 million, go ahead and do it. But you can't have the Pirates. How much they have? How much their uh, payroll was 40 That's million. What I'm saying. How can you? How is that justified to us as fans? When they're playing, that, yeah, when they're yes. playing the Cardinals and, and the Reds, who have. <laughs> Hundred fifty yeah, million. The right. Rangers Payroll. signed two guys right the day oh, before. Huge the contract, yes. more than the entire pirate light up. Oh, let me say this: so you were talking about this attendance is down, that's down, this dump. No teams for sale. Uh, Starling. Oh, they're still making money. Yeah, oh, Star- no, Starling money. Mar- Marte signed a four-year, seventy-eight million dollar deal with uh, the Mets. And was it was it Max Scherzer? Oh, you got forty million no, that, a year. Yeah, that was- this He's too old to get that. But he had a dead arm in the World Series. He's yes. a self-proclaimed yes. dead arm. Uh-huh. Hey, college football, uh, once again, we have Pitt, the exciting year, their best regular season Amazing. since 1981 with 10 wins and then 11 winning the championship game. Uh, Kenny Pickett, the record-setting season, Johnny Unitas Award, broke all the records at Pitt, ACC for most touchdown passes uh, in a season. They, they beat, the, uh, was it uh, Deshaun Watson's record? I believe it was. Yeah. And then Jordan Addison, one of the great receivers yeah. in the country, the Blitnikoff Award. The question is this, coming 2022 and beyond, can Pitt be a top 25 perennial program? No. Top 25? No. I'm not talking about top 15 or 10. No. That, it, it, it can't it, be. That, that can't means be. you have to win nine games every year. Yeah, that's why I said no. They can't. The, the reason they won this game this year, <laughs> Kenny Pickett. I mean, I said, they really hit gold mine without knowing they had a gold mine. It was serendipitous. You know? They yes. didn't know he was that no, good. No, no. Man, oh man, I remember when he first came back. <coughs> we were doing a show, and uh, somebody said they're top twenty-two. I said, move that down if he's back. Now, when I had Tom Lemming on last week, I asked him where Pitts ranked. They're fifty-fifth in recruiting. They only so, had that's 10 why players. they can't do it. He said they're they're sitting. 
and ready, and depending on a transfer portal, which is a really rolling the dice. Absolutely. But I would tell Mr. Lemming, all schools are doing that. Yeah, he's but I mean, Pitt, he's wrong but I mean, he's I mean wrong. no, he's not wrong. That's what Pitt's looking for. In they other have words, to, though. That's the way you have to go. Not out, you I don't think, if you're at Pitt. At this date, it's late. Yeah, you know, at Pitt. They, they got Fitz, uh, Fitzsimmons, who's the best player in the NPL. They got him. That's, that's a great get. Yeah. They got the best. When you get the best one, I like hearing that. You know, they, they didn't go to Penn State. They didn't go to Alabama. But Pitt, there's not enough great players around here to make them a powerhouse. So there's only one way, Eddie. The portal. Yeah, you have to There's depend on it. Yes. Now, Penn State seven and five. That's after a five and zero oh start. Yeah. Uh, they did have. A, they are in the process. They're number four recruiting behind Alabama, Ohio State. Well, move that, don't quarterbacks coming back for six years? And, year. and he's coming back. It just seems that. Hey, by the way, the kid they had, the star they had, uh -huh. the day he found out, he left. He's, he, he left. He's out. Okay. He, he heard the quarterbacks mm -hmm. coming back. Right. He was going the next but day. But you have a two-year run here where there's something like 11 and and and, uh, and 10, and it just seems like they're missing some pieces here and there, either uh, running back yeah. or somewhere along the offensive line. So they're recruiting, I'm, I'm sure, being at number four should should bounce them up. But they, they still have to find that way to beat Ohio State. Well, there's one thing they're missing, and we, we, we talked to, to the, his friend from Altoona who follows him on a daily basis. It's offensive line, Eddie. I they, used to, they used to make. They used to dominate. They used to have great running no, the best. They have the, used to the best offensive lineman in the, in the country. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now they, they don't get the top ten. So mm -hmm. you know you cannot compete in a, in a Big Ten, which is second to the SEC without a great offensive now, line. Now West Virginia finishes six and six. A little bit of a disappointing year. I thought they would do better than that. I, I really like their their coach. But I think next year is what his third year. Yes. I, I think that's a huge huge year next year for West Virginia. Neil Brown. Well, they won't settle for it. West Virginia lives for football down there. They'll, they'll, if he doesn't do better, I don't care how good a coach he is. Well, well don't forget out. Oklahoma and Texas are leaving eventually. And it went after the twenty two yeah, so or after should, the twenty three season. It should make it easy. They're, they're there for two more yeah, years. They, get, they go there. Uh, Slipper Rock University nine and three. Make the playoffs, another PSAC West Championship, Westminster 9-2, and two, and Grove City 8-3. and three. Great years for our area small schools. Yes, yeah, don't overlook that. If, you, if you're a really good football player in high school and you want to play great football, it's right around the corner. Slip Rock and those schools are waiting for you, boy. And wide receiver Henry Lipman, he's up for the, for the Harlan Hill Award. Yeah, a kid, yeah. They, they played all year with a kid from Linesville, Ohio. I'm thinking about that. Poor shoulder, and he played all year with a, uh, some type of shoulder injury. Uh, let's go to the NFL, and we talk about. We said so much about the Steelers. Where they're fixing the Steelers, the problems. Like Chuck Knoll said, they have problems, and there are many. No Ben in 2022. Here are your free agent quarterbacks. You tell me who you want. Uh, there's Cam Newton, no! <laughs> Matt Mitch Trubisky, Tyrod Taylor, Jameis Winston, Jacoby Brissett. 50-year-old Ryan Fitzpatrick, Andy Dalton, Nick Foles, and the only one I like is Marcus Mariota, but he makes $10 million a year right now with the Raiders. He's going to want at least $20. <coughs> well, out, of that, do you say? out of that list, and I didn't know who you were going to say, I take yeah. Trubisky. That's one I'd take. I, I I'd take a him. shot on him. Uh, uh, you, you could bring him in. Mm -hmm. it, it, you could do a lot worse, but I, I think if you want one, it's Marcus Mariota, but you, do you pray? Do you pay the price? You give him the no, twenty million. I wouldn't pay him any money because I think he's just an average quarterback. So that's what. If you're going to compare Trubisky and Merritt or any of those guys, Mariota's just like the rest of them. Yeah, I would never pay him ten million dollars. Well, here, here's your college football draft of quarterbacks of, of, available. Uh, although I have one in here, Caden uh, uh, Slovis. He's going to stay in college. He's transferring from USC. But you got Kenny Pickett. You got Matt Carell, you like from Ole Miss. I'm sorry, he's only six foot. He's a small guy, yeah. Uh, you got Sam Howell, North Carolina. Carson Strong, divide. He's the biggest in the group, I think, around six four, six mm -hmm. five, but he can't move. Desmond Ritter, he's a dual threat. Uh, Malik Willis of Liberty, I think Mike Tomlin said he likes him. Bailey Zapp, Western Kentucky. Will Levis of Kentucky. Uh, Jack Hayner of Fresno State. Willis is the one I like the best of all as, as, a, as a pro prospect because of the way the game's changed. He can do both run and pass. I don't like that kind of quarterback. Yes. I like how, uh, the kid from North Carolina. Yeah, Sam, Howard, Howard, Sam Howell's good. He's good. Sam, Sam Howell's good, yes. And uh, here, uh, I think you're going to have an in-house. I, I, they talk about Dwayne Haskins, but he's not going to do it. I think Mason Rudolph's your bridge quarterback. And in the 2022 draft, if I'm the Steelers, I'm not taking a quarterback in the first or second round. I may look for one of these guys in the fourth or fifth. They have too many holes to fill. 
I'd say wait to 2023 and grab Phil Jerkovic. <laughs> That'd be a good, he's a good quarterback. He's, yeah. he's worth it. But I agree with you on that. I wouldn't draft the quarterback either. No. No, I, I, I wouldn't. Let's put it in the first round. I'm Nothing saying. knocks you out. Nothing, you know, there's not a knockout in that, in that group. Well, help is needed everywhere. And let's start where they need it the most, and that's the offensive line. I just looked around some of the top picks, like at centers. Uh, you have Tyler uh, Linderbaum from Iowa, Alec Lindstrom from Boston College, and Jarrett Patterson a Notre Dame. I know they picked a center last year, but I think they really need another pick there. Yeah, they're not. They're, they're not going to draft an offensive lineman number one. No, I don't think. I think. I think they'll go defensively. I don't really do. I think. I think offensive linemen, running backs are two places you get players down, down lower in the draft. And their their guards are there's some top guards there again. BC Zion Johnson. They had a tremendous offensive line. Ed Ingram from LSU has been a, a mainstay there. And tackles. They need tackles. You got Thayer Mumford of Ohio State. Abraham Lucas of Washington State, and Darian Kinnard of Kentucky. I, I think they need here with these offensive line, I think they need at least two picks and maybe three here. Well, if, if, I, did if I did go on the offensive line at number one, it has to be an offensive tackle. Absolutely. That's the, that's, a, that, a left tackle. That's the one has to be. So yeah. I, I, would, I would look for the Ohio State guy if I was looking for an offensive line. And I know you think – I think they need depth at, at running back. You know, they, 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 they talk about – Najee Harris rushing for a thousand yards, but a thousand yards in seventeen games—it's nothing. It's nothing anymore. There's some top picks. I think you like that running back from Minnesota, Abraham. He's good. Yeah, yeah. He's and real good. Uh, then you have Kyron Williams of Notre Dame who's coming out. Letty Brown of West Virginia could do a little bit of everything. Zamir White of Georgia and uh, Brees Hall of Iowa State. I think they need at least one guy in there to back him up. They'll get a free agent running back. I don't. I really don't believe they'll draft a running back after after. Uh, after paying Najee Harris how much money they paid him last time. Linebacker needs, there's no depth. The biggest need is that middle linebacker. You have Ventrell Miller of uh, Florida, uh, uh, Mike Rose of Iowa State, and a guy I like, I've watched him play, is James Skalski, 240-pound middle linebacker from Clemson. He's a run stuffer. He's bigger than any yeah, middle he's bigger linebacker. Than what they have. And that's what they're going to look for. I think yeah. they're going to look for some size I in there. I think despite Bush's uh, shortcomings, he is small. He's, I don't think he's, they're going to He's 5'11". I think, I think they're going to let him he's go. He's 5'11", about 235. I think they're going to let him go. They, they got him to cover pass, as yeah. I said. Skalski's 6'2", 240. And now they, they found out they, they, the teams are running right through them. They need to – They need to. He, he gets smothered by guards, Bush. Oh, he can't see. You know, he can't now, see. outside linebackers, uh, this Devin Lloyd of Utah, he, he, he's a stud. And um, uh, Terrell Bernard of Baylor had been a tremendous year. Merlin Robinson of Arizona State, this, this guy – uh, has a great motor and an outside pass rusher. Yeah, after signing Watt last year, they won't go in that direction, so you can, you can pass over that one. Uh, I, I think they're going to take at least two linebackers. Okay. One Maybe inside. inside. One inside, inside. one, one outside. outside. I think they need depth at outside. And um, getting older, it's that defensive line. Guys, they need some help there. Uh, Thibodeau from Oregon. Yeah. I, I don't know if he'll be there. Aiden Hutchison. Oh, he won't Michigan. be there with they pick. No. 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 Oh, no. no. Both and uh, so yeah. I think the guy for them there is Cade Hall. He's a dark horse for the Steelers out of San Jose State. He might be as fast as any defensive end in college football. Well, I know they need – when you're discussing it, they need help everywhere. So whoever they, wherever they take, it has to be the best player. It can't be like, yeah, okay, just, it, just they, pick yeah, they, need, yeah they need so much help. That, you can't just say, hey, can't we pick miss. the defensive like, They've tackle. missed the last few top picks. Oh. They can't miss. And That's defensive tackle, you have Haskell Garrett, Ohio State. Can he be the next? You know, Cam Hayward's going to be, what, 33 next year? Yep. He's taking a beating this year. A guy from Michigan I like very much with Chris Hinton. He stuffs the inside. And uh, – Jordan Davis of Georgia. Yeah, Davis is the, is the one. He'll be, Wait, gone. He'll be he? gone about 320 too. pounds. He'll be gone by the time they get, get they, there. They too. need someone in there. But uh, And then, guys, defensive backs, defensive corners. Can they get – I love Ahmad Gardner out of Cincinnati. And uh, you don't talk about him much because it's Appalachian State. Yeah. It's Sean Jolly. Yeah. He's a big kid. And uh, uh, Kair Elam of Florida. Elam name's been good for forever down in Florida. They're always they're always great athletes. Uh, I'm gonna say it again the second time I said it on the show. 
every place you look at the Steelers, they need something. something. Oh. So whoever the yeah. best player on the board is, they have, they to, have take. to take him. They have to take I, him. I think they need three defensive backs. I'm going to say two corners and the safeties. The two best out there are Kyle Hamilton of Notre Dame and Bubba Bolden of Miami. I don't think either Hamilton one of them. won't be there for sure. No, Hamilton's going to be someone's number one pick. And so we look at the draft order. Give me uh, uh, Detroit, this is my thought. Do they go for a quarterback or do they take Aiden Hutchison or Thibodeau as a defensive end? They'll take one of those two. I think so. And I, I mean, think, let's face it, Goff's not – Mahomes, but they need more than a they need right. more than yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, Houston, I say they're taking Kenny Pickett a pit. Wow, that high, Eddie. I, I, I that's they, that's, they need a quarterback. Yeah, they do. do. I, 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 I wouldn't invest. I, and I, I'm a pick a guy, but not number two in the draft. I just don't. I they don't think, do something with Watson, whatever think. it is. Yes. Yeah, no one, no one will take a chance on him. And uh, number three, Jacksonville. This is the way it is right now. It could change. Uh, I think they think Thibodeau. Of Oregon, whether Urban Myers is coming back, he got some real problems down down there with there. Uh, uh, coaches, and they said he's lost the locker room. Uh, I don't think happens. he'll be there either. Yeah. I'll be shocked. I'm mean, I, I gonna miss. I'll say that. I'll be shocked if he's They're coaching. They're working the on the year. buyout right now. Yeah, I would think at Georgia. And, 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 how's he gonna be there? How, uh, right. First, he, first, he's, he's finding out what Saban found out. <laughs> you can't out recruit these guys. No, you're not gonna. No, no. no. And then the other thing too, I say this about. A lot of these high school coaches are good. I said, let him go, coach. Somewhere else. Yeah. Like, they, because he looks like his dog died in the first quarter, and he's already lost more games oh, yes. than he lost in five Think years. about that. Hey, the Jets at number four, they desperately need help at the offensive line running back. The Giants, they need to rebuild the offensive line. Chicago. Giants, yeah, if the Giants, of the teams you just mentioned, if the gentleman can land two or three offensive linemen, you'll see. No, you're going to see Jones a quick, gets killed. You're going to see a quick turnaround. They're yeah. firing because they got GM. some yeah. because they got some good players. They're firing Gettleman. Uh, yeah. It's a shame because they got good players. They're one place is just killing them. They, like Barky looks like same, he, he same looks thing, like he's same uh, thing with the Bears. He they need help offensive places, line yes, wide receiver. Barkley. And then I have Carolina right now at seven. I think they're taking Sam Howell, the quarterback, out of North oh, Carolina. Yeah. Seattle. They uh, need, oh, you hit that one. Yeah. You hit that one. That's, that's, what that's I think Seattle I think take that out. big time rebuild that defense, defensive line, linebackers. Wilson's going to New Orleans, I'm here. Yeah. And then all these other teams are right now jockeying for position. That's Raiders, Minnesota, Miami, Saints, Washington, Philly, Atlanta, and the Steelers all bunch, bunch together. Back to Seattle, Pete Carroll won't be there either. So I, I think no. there's two coaches definitely not going to be next year, Carroll and Meyer. Well, Carroll retire or will he go somewhere else? Uh, he'll retire. Yeah. And that's it for us. Have a happy new year. We'll see you next year. From high school sports to community events and beyond, you can find all of your favorite local shows on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Hi, I'm Trisha from the Butler Buzz. You can watch my show or other local programming like Up for Adoption or Hunting Nostalgia only on the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel. Check us out right now on Channel 100 or search Armstrong Neighborhood Channel on YouTube for playlists and much more. Spirit, town pride, community. This is the Armstrong Neighborhood Channel.